Hello and welcome back to the Only Fools Love Horses YouTube channel. And it's our final episode of the Cheltenham Anti-Post series. The next time you'll see us talking about Cheltenham on your YouTube screens, it'll be our Cheltenham preview next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, kindly sponsored by Old Gold Racing. And they've got an offer for you lot at home. If you join the waiting list right now over on Twitter, uh, you'll get a 5% discount on the new horse they've got coming to training, Oh Darling. So if you join the private um, list, You'll go on to the private sale period and you can get 5% off there with Old Gold Racing. But uh, we're running down to, to Cheltenham now. It really is hotting up. We've had the handicap weights released from Ireland and England. We know what every horse has got its mark. And the stable tours are, are flying out left, right and centre. And one person who conducts plenty of stable tours and sorts of many trainers left, right and centre is our guest this week, Rishi Passad from Racing TV, ITV Racing from, from God knows where. Rishi how are you and and how's how's the ropes Cheltenham treating you? I'm loving it so far. Um, can't wait. I know a lot of people get a bit up and down about Cheltenham. Some people say we talk about it too much. Some people say uh, the festival's diluted. Yes, all those things have been in the discussion, but we we'll get to as close as we are. I don't really care, if I'm honest. I'm, I'm looking forward to the horses, looking forward to the action, looking forward to all the drama that's probably going to unfold between now and festival. It is just very exciting, and um, I, I'm glad to, to share the sentiment with three like-minded individuals. <laughs> it, it really is a it really is a big run up and a, a fantastic time. Like I I was on Twitter the other day, Rishi, and I, I saw one of those history of horse racing videos, and you were at Royal Ascot when it was on BBC. You know, you've you've been on our screen for a while, and you know the Ch Cheltenham Festival has obviously changed a bit in your time. Sort of in three days, four days, different trains come onto the scene. But do you still get the same excitement coming up to to Cheltenham? You know, it's four days of extraordinary. Do you still do you still feel that in the in in the, in the, in, the, in the in the skin? You know, it's really exciting. Uh, absolutely. Um, as much as I ever have done. And the other thing that I'm really proud of and, and slightly winds me up a little bit is the fact that a lot of people in racing who are racing fans, they you know go on about how we do uh, centre too much. We concentrate and focus, not just us, but also, you know, trainers and jockeys and owners. They focus so much on, on Cheltenham. But the one thing I've learned in being lucky enough to work in the sport for as long as I have and, and, and do one or two other things is that, Actually, most other sports would, you know, they, they would they would love something quite at the level that Cheltenham is. You know, in other sports in the UK, if it's tennis, it's Wimbledon, and they have that. You know, racing has something that is akin to that, and that's Cheltenham more than anything else. You know, as much as we love the Grand National, Royal Ascot, and the Derby, Cheltenham's something else. You know, the obsession with it is exactly what a lot of other sports try to recreate. We've got that. Let's not knock that. We can work around the things that don't work in racing. But one of the things that clearly does work is the quality of the four days. Yeah, it can be tinkered with. Don't get me wrong. I'm not entirely in favour of four days and maybe it should be better back to three. But we have got something that is very, very special. Uh, I think it should be celebrated, which is why we talk about and everything that happens. I'm, I'm buzzing for it. Yes, it really is a, a special time, a special meeting. Lee, you know, if, if there's one person I could come to to talk to Cheltenham and they'd be absolutely buzzing all year, it's yourself. And, you know, it's the final episode. <laughs> um, have you have you enjoyed the series so far? And we're, we're kicking on now. We've got the preview coming up right on the horizon now. Yeah, I've absolutely loved it. I, like Rishi, I think it should be celebrated. I, I maybe has gone a little bit too much about it because I do love it. And um, look, it's my holiday rolled into one. And, um, I build up all year for it. And just some, look from from a kid, I've absolutely loved it. It's stuff of kind of dreams for me because I've been watching it and I, and I love the horses so much. Uh, and then to go there, it's just I think it's something different um, altogether. Like no other sport, like Rishi says, has what we have, and 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 it's quite a luxury, really. So I know a lot of people can whinge about it price of a paint and stuff like that but just enjoy the moment enjoy the race and enjoy the horses and, and, and enjoy it for what it is i would have said so look you're paying an extra couple of quid who cares you can't take away <laughs> <laughs> harry you've been uh you've been you've been doing the jockey club circuits recently you've been at kempton on the weekend um and right. you're, gonna, you're gonna be in a slightly different capacity <laughs> at cheltenham this year i suppose i should ask the question to you are you looking forward to to working the cheltenham festival this year yeah, I mean, Kempton, I mean, the Jockey Club gave me the uh, 
the the permission to 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 run the Kempton social medias over the weekend, which God was fair play to them. <laughs> I mean, God help them. Um, but I think it went pretty cool. I got I got a brilliant video of uh, Ben Bromley uh, celebrating as he as he passed the line, and uh, and that was really good. And a, a few good interviews. Got a photo with the good old Harry Redknapp, one of my absolute icons growing up. And I saw him in the parade ring, and like he's 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 such a cool character. And, and like you said, actually, it's going to be my first first Cheltenham working and not as a social meeting which is it's going to be weird seeing all, all my friends there and all, all my pals um out on the out on the drinks but look it's one of those things that um go, going through university is something that I've always wanted to do um and I, now now I've got I've got the chance to it so hopefully I don't I don't balls it up and look if you Richie if you see me in the parade ring if you want to if you want to give me a little punch saying Harry focus up and then uh, and then, that's absolutely fine but no I'm absolutely buzzing what about yourself Ash though because you've asked us three but are you looking forward to child and you've been doing the rounds you've been up here there everywhere you've been to Paul Nichols <laughs> Fergal's yard you've been to absolutely everyone and but yeah no one's asked are you looking forward to it yeah, I am. I, I look. It's a privilege to, to to work in the sport and to to do what we do. Really, it, you know, I, I may wake up tired, I may go to bed tired, but I have to remember at the end of the day, like it's it's something something else. This and just you know, speaking to to to, to people like Paul Nichols and Nicky Henderson so candidly, and they're sort of respecting you kind of thing and shooting content is is there's not really a feeling like it. It's it's, it's um it's 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 it's, it's a bit like a drug, you know. This hot working this sport, man. It's just it gives you a kick that you just can't really describe. Um, and it, it's, it's it's not um, really a job, is it? It's not really a job. Oh no, it's it's it's, it's amazing. Don't, uh, don't tell really... people that. I've been. <laughs> 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 Richie's job will be under threat soon. <laughs> um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll get on. We'll kick on then, lads. We've got three races to to cover. The final three um, graded races, and then we're go also going to touch on the handicaps that we are recording on the day. The handicap weights have come out, so it's recording on Tuesday. Upload on the Wednesday. We're just going to highlight maybe one or two handicappers that have really caught our eye, um, as we now know the weights. But the first race uh, we're going to be looking at is on the Friday, and it's the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Uh, and this is a race maybe that hasn't changed up too much as we as we speak. Uh, Dancing City and, and High Class Heroes seven to one co favourites. That's brilliant to see in a in a race of this level. Uh, reading Tommy wrong fifteen to two. Gidley Park nine to one. Depending on the the weather and the ground, he might end up here rather than the Bearing Bingham. Captain T tens look like he's probably going to go here. Uh, Chanel Bob in there at tens and Lecky Watson twelve. Bigger about the rest. Rishi, I'll come to you first of all. Albert Bartlett, it's always sort of considered a race. You need a hardened stayer, a real sort of proven warrior. Is it? Is it? Are you looking for that this year? Because there's there's plenty of up and coming horses that could be have you know unexposed profiles. Yeah, it's it's one of those races that, like so many of the novice races, you are taking a shot in the dark with whatever you go because there are so many horses who haven't quite shown us exactly what they've got in the locker. Um, we've seen quite a couple of battles in Ireland with the likes of Dancing City, Reading Tommy Wrong, etc., showing a bit high class hero. We've seen quite a bit. You know, Captain Teague is another horse who I, I really like him. Um, I like the fact that he's been in a, a couple of hard battles. Uh, one where I think the race developed against him at Cheltenham when he got beaten by Manila Missile. Um, I think talking to Harry Cobden and Paul Nichols after the race, they immediately talked about the fact that he really is a three mile chaser, three mile plus, a staying chaser of the future. But he was better next time out at Newbury. He was ridden better or he's ridden in a, a slightly more um, appreciative manner to his own talents. And I thought he showed us then he can grind it. He can battle tough attritional ground. But he's also got form, you know, obviously at the festival last year when he was behind the dream to share. There's a lot about him that I like. I like a horse that comes into this race that's had a battle. I mean, he's not the only one. Don't get me wrong. You know, Dancing City, really Tommy me wrong. They had to do stuff, you know, to work hard to win their races. Um, but... When you look back at last year's winner, Stay Away Fay from the Nichols Stable, he was rated 136 uh, going into the festival. This horse is rated, already rated six pounds higher. He's 142. Um, and I just get the impression that it's going to be, as I'm sure we, we will all agree on this, it's going to be a proper test. Three miles, uh, it's going to be a grind. And I want a horse that I feel is guaranteed to, to enjoy that. Or well, enjoy might be the wrong word, but who will not be compromised by a race of that nature. I think Captain Teague fits that bill and i still think he's got a little bit more to come because of the of the distance 
Yeah, he seriously is a, a proper grinder. I thought that shallow victory was, you know, you really see, saw some determination from him there. And just speaking to Paul Nichols today about um, that he went for a, a, a work at Kempton's day. He took four runners, I think Stay Away Faye, uh, Corbett Qua, uh, Captain Teague, and there's another on Brave Man's Game. And speaking to Paul there, he seems that they're in top order at the moment and they really liked Captain Teague and the way he went about it at Kempton. So it looks like he's uh, definitely one to, to keep on side. Um, I play from Constitution Hill and didn't pick up any or <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought. I thought they're going to have to keep their distance. A little bit like social distancing, aren't they? Now you know you can it goes very easily. I think. So uh, hopefully, anyway, hopefully nothing comes to light. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. <laughs> um, Lee Albert Bartlett. Uh, Rishi's made the the, the 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 correct, I suppose, claim that you do need a proper stayer, a proper one that loves a bit of a battle potentially. Um, is there one in this race that you're highlighting that you think is going to relish the battle of a Bartlett? I hope so. I, I did put this horse up a, a long way back there for one of our Sunday shows, but um, Lecky Watson, I think, is probably um, overpriced still. Um, has got a handicap entry, but I think we'll take this race in. Um, look, Willie Mullins has got reading Tommy wrong in, in, in the likes of um, them horses in the race still, but um, has that blend of um, graded races with proven stamina um just led on the line over two miles seven uh three runs back was second to slade steel who was frank the form behind ballyburn um that was in a grade two um only beaten half a length behind St slade steel and then the last day ran third staying on again at the line um behind reading tommy run in ill atlantique in the lowlands of nace i just think um it's probably one that's went under the radar. Can, can I blow me trumpet, or should I should I not bother um, doing a crisp? But you, you, I, you may you may as well you may as well blow the trumpet about bright days ahead look, and all these horses, Lee. You may as well show off look, your talent. I did mention this horse at forty, so I hope somebody <laughs> got on way back when uh, on on one of the Sunday shows. Did you get on, Lee? I got on at thirty threes. I I was on. Uh, so slightly less, but it, uh, it's almost not worth it if you're missing seven points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I was, I'm, I'm here for the um, the viewers and the punters. I, I'm not here for myself, as do you know what I mean. But the, yeah, look, I, I did put up a, a way back, but I, I still I think I would go in again, even at that price. Um, look, high class hero, um, is probably going to maybe, maybe be the chosen one, has been um, saved after the last run. I did, um, yeah, that David Casey chose that race specifically so then they could give it a gap to then come here. So, um, high class hero, maybe the one, um, from Willie Mullins Yard. But if if uh, Lecky Watson comes here, I, I would give that a huge shout, uh, I really would. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, Lecky Watson, graded horse coming in here and got that nice form behind some decent horses. Um, you've mentioned High Class Hero there, probably a good segue into to, to my fancy and the fact I do like High Class Hero. Um, I'll get the very miniature trumpet out for this and the fact I did put this horse up at 11 on this series. So, you know, like like you, like you, Lee, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the viewer. I'm not here for myself. Um, but look, I, I like the way he went for his race last time out. I thought, he, I thought he showed that he can get into a battle there. Like, I know it maybe wasn't yeah. um, the strongest form in the world. It'd be easy fella by just under two lengths but i think he showed a different character to himself you know the victories he'd been picking up at galway limerick and listol going back sort of towards the back end of the summer and coming into the autumn he, he sort of just showed i thought when i first saw him i thought he was a, a ballymore or a bearing bingham horse all over um and then they sort of said he's gonna step up in trip in time so i think he's got that class i really think he's got that class above a couple of horses in here i think he's got a great turn of foot and i think he's just he travels beautifully into his races. Look, the thrill I'll get from him traveling down the hill um, to the second last, I'll, I'll take that above anything else. And if and if if he if he if he stops, if if, if he doesn't want to go jump the hill, that's fine. But the thrill, of, the thrill I get of him again though, he's made the same mistake at the last twice, but was still able to quicken to the line, which is a good mm. thing. But he's made that same mistake exactly almost identical uh the last three times I, I i just think he's i think he's a classy classy horse i really yeah. do like i think he i think he really fits his name in high class like i, I really do think he is and look on on, on pure form line now whether you can question captain teague underperforming the day is beaten at cheltenham he kicked uh high class hero kicked the big doyen out the way at limerick two starts ago by seven lengths and the big doyen's got to pretty much have been the nose of captain teague at cheltenham so on that form, that's quite good, and I'll be with him at sevens. I couldn't really see any others that were really taking my fancy. Harry, final word, Albert Bartlett. Uh, anything in here that's uh, really, really looking like a, a horse you quite like? 
Yeah, there was two. Uh, Rishi, Rishi Sundar captain Teague perfectly, so I don't obviously need to go diving into that. He was one that I definitely had on my radar. Um, I think, the, the interestingly, RPR has actually got captain Teague's uh, second to Manila Missile as a, as a better performance than his Chalo win. Now, I thought that was interesting because I thought captain Teague was always holding the likes of Luckaway, who we know has been campaigned productively all, all season, albeit he, he was a little bit disappointing last time. But the jukebox man is one, if it came up soft, this horse is just going to love the extra distance. And I think he was, si he was six lengths behind. Way, I'll, just, I'll let you know he is going to run. Yeah, so yeah. That, even even better. He's still 25. I briefly did mention this horse um, a few a few months ago for this race. Um, and he was 25 then, so I'm glad to see see him stay the same price two weeks out. Um, he's a three mile points point winner. He won by six lengths. He, he's just gone up and up and trip. And look, he only he, he stepped up into Grade One company after contesting two NAF races at Foss Lass, in which he won as he liked. Uh, Newbury, I thought he actually came there with what looked like a winning run, um, but it was only Captain Teague who arguably had the more experience and and that little bit of class at that at this early stage in both of their careers, obviously respected, but the jukebox man, I just think Ben Paulin has got a very, very good team going to Cheltenham this year. He's got Teller the name going into the Supreme. He's obviously got um, handstands going into the Bear and Bingham. And I think the jukebox man is just being overlooked slightly. So I'd give him a, a bit of a squeak at 25 to one. And I think that Chalo form is going to be better, um, better off looking at, especially it says it was officially soft, but the ground at Newbury on Chalo day was disgusting. And it took yeah. a very, very, it took a stayer to win that. And look, Rishi, I think you're bang on. I think these horses there will be will, will be really fit. And some of these horses may, might not have had a fight um, coming up the Cheltenham Hill. And I think both of these has. So Captain Teague at 10s. And if you want a bit of each way value, I think the jukebox man at 25s is certainly one to keep on your radar. Yeah, Ben Pauling, I spoke to him immediately after the race. He was very happy with the shallow run. And he's one of the few trainers who's going to have a runner in the Supreme, the Bering Bingham and... Uh, the Albert Bartlett. Um, so Good on him. Good on him. Fair yeah, play yeah. to Ben. Well done. Congratulations. Um, Albert Bartlett done with. And we'll move on to uh, many people's eyes, the big race of the week. And it, it always is, really, the Cheltenham Gold Cup. And this year, uh, it really is a, a classy race. You know, you've got Gallop and Deschamps heading the market, uh, 11 to 10, as I see on my screen now. But there's a, there's a plethora of, of opposition in behind. Fast or slow, 5 to 1. Shishkin, 7 to 1. Jerry Colomb, 12s. Long press, 14s. Brave Man's Game, 16s. Highlights is a, a good each way bet by your trainer, Paul Nichols. Uh, Corrick Rambler, 20s. Hewitt, 20s. Uh, Judgment's Game, 25s. Monkfish, potentially 40s. Um, Rishi, it's, 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 it's Gallop and Deschamps at the top of the market, and he deserves to be there. But it's a it's a deep field in behind. He's going to have to be a true champion to to, to beat this lot. Uh, it's a deeper field than I thought it would be probably um, six weeks, a, a month ago. Uh, it did look after Gallop and won at Christmas time that the others might not bother. But actually, even in defeat last time at Fast or Slow, I thought didn't run too badly. Um, I think it's quite conceivable. And I must admit that I've been put right on this because I wasn't sure whether or not Fast or Slow had much of a chance of overturning the form with Gallop and Deschamps. But I looked at, um, just looking back at his races again, the way the race was run at, uh, last time out at Leopardstown, I, I don't think it suited Fast or Slow. And actually, when I thought um, he probably has more speed because obviously he's won the John Durkin and he's clearly got plenty of pace. But I watch his race last year at Cheltenham with Corak Rambler. He's a stayer, fast or slow. And I'm more now inclined into thinking that he's got more of a chance going to Cheltenham against Gallup and Deschamps than he might have had at, uh, at Leopardstown. Also, his record at Leopardstown prior, even that run last time out, that's his best run ever at Leopardstown. His, re his record prior to that, he, he bombed out three times. Um, so I expect to see a much better performance from fast or slow in, in terms of his relationship uh, and the proximity to Gallup and Deschamps. And also, there's now Shishkin in the picture, although, and I know some people might might crab this, but with Constitution Hills uh, mucus, with a few of the Henderson horses running below par, I would just hang fire. If I like any of the Henderson horses, if anybody likes any of the Henderson horses, wait t till the, the last possible moment before the festival with regards to those horses. That's the beauty of, of the time that we've got with everything going on before feeling like you can commit. If a few horses come to life between, you know, say that's the weekend at Sandown before uh, the Imperial Cup meeting, et cetera, if they come to come to life then, then might go in with a few of the Henderson's horses. But obviously Shishkin has put himself in the picture with that win at Newbury. And 
I think he probably would have won the King George, which would be quite something to have had him winning. He's really, in my eyes, a King George winner and and the uh, Denman Chase winner going into the Gold Cup, which puts him massively in the picture. But the Henderson stable thing, that's a little thing issue for me. So I'm going to go with an each way bet on L'Ompresse. I know other people have mentioned it already. Um, I think he's a top class horse. I've always thought he's right at the top level. The be- I think he's the best staying chaser in the UK. Um, uh, very good in the Turners when he won. Uh, his, his, se- his novice season was superb. His win in the rehearsal chase when he came back in Newcastle, given lumps of weight away, shows just the, the type of horse he is. You know, he can handle lots of different scenarios, which I enjoy. One scenario he's clearly not best at. And anybody who will argue with me, have a look back at all his runs, even when he won at Sandown, when he won at Ascot, and when he was second or going to finish second in the King George the Brave Man's game. He jumps left. He jumps left. He jumps left. Now, against Pick Dory, he was always going to struggle because Pick Dory was always going to... Yeah, a fluent pick Dory, always going to put him under pressure. On that ground, over that trip, it's just not his bag. I actually thought he ran really well in defeat. Um, I spoke to a couple of people. One person, I asked them, I said, on another podcast, I asked them, I said, I said, what did you make of Lompresse's run and his Gold Cup hopes? The person responded and he went, they've vanished. <laughs> and I, I was a bit shocked because I thought they'd gone up. Um, the, the performance against Protector at, at Lingfield, I thought he was very strong at the end of the race. Bearing in mind it was his comeback run. I think it was, you know, he's got a lot of stamina. Three miles, two and a half furlongs at Cheltenham. I, I, I'm sure you all know anyway. I cannot stress how much that just exposes horse's stamina. That extra bit up the straight, up the hill, to the line. There's no hiding place. And you know, a horse like Brave Man's Game, as good as he is, he just does not see out the trip quite as well as one or two others, like Gallup Panishamp. So I can't have him winning it. I can see him running well like he did last year to the final fence and then emptying out and they'll run away from him. I'm not entirely certain that Galopan will run away from L'Ompresse. And I think that L'Ompresse is the biggest danger to Galopan de Champ. I think Galopan will probably win if he, the horse who won at Christmas and the horse who won the race last year. But I think L'Ompresse is a, is a big player and I think he'll give Galopan most to think about. One for the British, then potentially long press to to serve it up to Gallop and the Champs. Harry, do you do you see a, a similar picture? Do you see there being one that can get close to Gallop and the Champs, or do you see one that can get past Gallop and the Champs when it comes to the Gold Cup? Well, like, like, I think you summed it up perfectly. This is much. A, this is this is a far deeper race than it was last year, in my opinion. I think Gallop and the Champs and Brave Man's Game looked to have it between themselves from a long way out last season, and that came to the fore in the finish. Gallop and the Champs took it up at the last and powered away against Brave Man's Game, who we know isn't the strongest of stairs. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't stay, but when it's three miles two, it's likely the, the rain that we've had, it's not going to be the, the, the nicest of ground, I can imagine, uh, at 3.30 on the on the Friday. So I, uh, I think it's just worth looking looking away. Now, the home press, I, I took... Now, Rishi, I'm sure you're, you're going to like this, because I took, a, I took a different opinion than many did. Um, to his Ascot race. Now, I always prefer when horses run over a shorter distance and then go right back up in trip because I just think it sharpens up their jumping. Now, you look at, I think, I think Lucinda Russell made a very valid point on a car, um, Carac Rambler and the Grand National. And she was always saying, well, horses that they used to go over, was it Monty's, Monty's Pass that won, I think was campaign over two, two races over two miles and then went straight onto the Grand National. Now that would all it does is just sharpen up the jumping. Long press. He was in hindsight it's a wonderful thing. He was never going to beat Pick Dorhey over his optimum trip. His jumping would always be made uh, put under put under scrutiny. I think he passed the test. He was a little bit hairy a few, but he's bound to be. He's going to be running over. I think what is it five extra furlongs or something? Um, I'm not too sure how many how 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 further it is going to be at Cheltenham. He's going to go back the way he wants to go. He's going to be going left handed. Where he jumps like look, I think fourteen to one's a bit of an overreaction. Shishkin, we all know, um, he is very talented. But and for me personally, I'd be having a win bet on Shishkin, but I'd also be having uh, a, a good each way bet on Lamb Press because especially with the likes that you're going to get on, on the day, you're probably going to get four places from a few bookmakers. I cannot see Lamb Press out the front four. Um, I think. I've come round to Lahon Press. I think he's a very talented horse and I don't think that Ascot defeat will do him any harm whatsoever. Two votes for Lahon Press. Uh, Lee, I, I, I know you. I know how you bet. I know how you come into races like this. Uh, and <laughs> if I was having a bet uh, on what you were going to say right now, I'd bet that you'd say that Gallop and Deschamps wins this and 
we'll move on. But I could be wrong. Uh, and I have been wrong many a time with many of my bets. So uh, what do you like for the Gold Cup? So you answered. Uh, yeah, look, I do think Gallup and Deschamps will win. I, I can't have Lahan press that. I really can't. I, I, I kind of get your point that it will come on again by going to Cheltenham and, you know, back to the scene of the crime, maybe um, the slower ground will, will, will be fine for him. But uh, it's just not for me. I thought he was exposed the last day, to be honest. Um, Harry, Harry's buttering up Rishi there. He's, he's, he's back in Rishi's, all of Rishi's selections. Yeah. We didn't I know, play. I know. Rishi, you <laughs> can come working, on all of the time. Working. Yeah, used to. I think. Yeah, but um, look, I just Lee, Lee, long press has won at Newcastle. How can you not fancy? You know what? Before? I didn't even have to mention Newcastle. Rishi, you mentioned him for Newcastle first, by the way. <laughs> That's the bingo card stuff there. But I do think um, the same with fast or slow, though. I think um, this. <laughs> I nearly said this is his Gold Cup. This is his Gold Cup, just because this will be his target all, all day long, I would have said. I think he's built up to this. And I think the key race was that Ultima. I thought, watching it back, I've, I've watched it a few times, and all he'd done is stay. Um, look, he's won that John Dirk, I mean, and he's won a punch-down Gold Cup. He's actually two from two with um, Gallup and Shumps. I think it will be a lot closer. I think he'll be staying on best of the lane. And my beloved Jerry Colomb as well. I think that the ground... Um, I seen Ruby Walsh mention it um, as he was leaving from Cheltenham on the train to London. Um, all all the ground around the areas that they're soaking wet, they're flooded. Um, I, I believe the cross country in the middle is 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 heavy and and um, water patches all over as well. Look, Jerry Colomb will will suit that type of race as well. I can see him staying on in, with third. I think it's between Gallup and Deshaun, faster, slow, and Jerry Colomb. Personally, I think um, I will. Shishkin out. He, he, I, look, like Rishi says, he, he's obviously probably would have won that. Uh, King George, he's went to the Denman. He's coming in here in, in a lot better form than some would suspect. But uh, yeah, look, he's, 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 he's more of a rogue than me, I would have said. So I, I'll cross him off. And I, and I think Gallup and Sean back to back. And I, and I think it'll be one of them vintage years, to be honest, as well. Yeah, it's, it's surely going to be a vintage year, and I can't believe the one horse that hasn't got a mention yet uh, is 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 the real the wacker. Um, look, Ash, Ash, the shackles are off now. This horse has Hewitt. absolutely no chance. Stop it! As, stop! As, stop! As Rishi has said, there or Hewitt. Do you think he's got a chance there, Rishi Hewitt? Uh, the ground would have to be on the good side for him to. I, I don't think I'm, I believe the ground's likely to start on the soft side, and the yeah. weather forecast is unsettled. I don't think it'll be quick enough for him, and uh, he just got away with it in the in the King George. Everybody was beating themselves up up front, um, and he and he nicked it. I cannot see it, but <laughs> I couldn't see him winning the King George. So you know, don't miss me when it comes to Hewick. I can't get him right. Yeah, I think I think that you've made a key point there about the ground. I think it is going to be sort of on the softer side. And I think listening to Roy Delaghi, he was on a podcast and he said that he looked at his weather and it said that it was going to be like 30 mil dropping throughout the week. And then he dropped the next, he, he looked at it the next day and it said that it was completely cleared up. So I think it really is a, an unsettled week. But uh, John Pullen mentioned that potentially the rain is going to be coming on the Thursday. So that would again sort of suggest that later in the week might be a touch softer. So that, that does lead me to the real whacker because... I thought there's plenty of promise in his run in the Cotswold. Like if you if you if you watch his run, first of all, he jumped a little bit out to his right a couple of fences, which is very not like him. I think, and this is gonna sound silly, it's very Lee's already said it as well. I think this is his gold cup. And and I know that phrase does get battered about, and this is the <laughs> Cheltenham Gold Cup. But I think if 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 Patrick Neville started this season, he's gone right, what race do I want to win? It's gonna be a race at Cheltenham, because I know he's ten pounds better around that place, and it's gonna be a top, top race. So let's just let's train him to win the Gold Cup on one day. Very Lord Windermere-esque. And I think this is going to be his chance. If you look at the Cotswold chase, he's coming down the hill and he's he's coming around the bend under, under Sam Twist and Davis. He's getting nudged along, but he's still staying a lot. He's still staying on. I think Sam gives him a reminder before the last. And then after the last, Robert Guy falls and he does really well to get past Stay Away Faye and who was in, else in the Cotswold chase? Uh, was it Hoy Senor, I think, something like that? Um, the two that are ahead of him in the, in the Cotswold, he did really well to get past him, staying on all the way to the line, galloping all the way to the line. And there's 66 to one about him. Um, I, 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 look, I've backed him. Uh, the shrewd I am, I've backed him at 25 to one. So I've really got the <laughs> negative value there. Um, but I, I just, look, I think I'm there's going to be one race in him. You know, can I back you up? I don't, I, I know, 
I've crabbed him all season. I thought that was a solid run in the last day. If you watch back, he, all he done is stayed on. Do you know what I mean? Um, I actually, lads, don't... lads, lads. But, <laughs> seriously, I laugh at us because I, I've, I've, I've kind of crabbed him all season, but he's kind of shown he's worth the two previous runs. But then, um, that last day, I did, I did kind of take a little shine to him, just a little one, even though he beat my beloved Jerry Clum. I just think that there's a chance that look, Go- look, Gallup Anderson's been has kept being campaigned a bit more um, forwardly in his races compared to his novice campaign. Um, but fast or slow, will be dropped out. Brave Man's going to be prominent because that's how all Nichols horses are pretty much uh, ridden. What else? Shishkin, he'll be sort of sat in the middle. He won't be really doing too much. He might be a bit prominent, but that's it. Jerry Colom, he'll be like he was last year. He'll be sat sort of five lengths off the pace. Uh, Long Press might make it, but I, I don't see it too too often, to be honest. And Corak Rambler is going for the, for the Grand National, and I, I wouldn't have him too high up on my list. So for me, that leads it to, 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 to the real whacker from the front. Jumping much better than he did in the Cotswold Chase. Not not a ton better, but I think a bit better. Uh, I think he'll be fully fit. I think he'll be 110%, fingers crossed anyway. And look, that'll be it for me. I won't have a play in the race apart from him. Um, fast or slow, I love the horse. I might have a, I might have an each way to nothing on fast or slow, because I do really think he's a he's a top quality horse. But I think Gallup Under Champs is the most likely winner. But the real whacker for me is, is the each way play in the Gold Cup. So that's the Gold Cup covered and our final race uh, in our final episode of the Cheltenham Antipost series is the Mayor's Chase. Now the Mayor's Chase uh, potentially someone's uh, get out of jail free card uh, for some people because Dino Blue is topping the market and has been a strong favourite anti-post wise for a while. Even money for Willie Mullins' uh, horse there. Uh, Allegory de Vassi, second in the market at uh, 7 to 2. Limerick Lace for Gavin Cromwell, 11 to 2. Uh, Brides Hill, stable mate of Limerick Lace and Gavin Cromwell, 8 to 1. Riviere's Tell, big jump to 20s. Carol's Pass, 25s. Fantastic Lady, 25s. Um, lads, we talked a little bit about this on the Sunday show, and if, if people are still want to catch a little bit more about that, do check out our Sunday show recording over on Twitter. Um, but Rishi, the, the mayor's chase, I suppose the big question mark uh, is, is: Does Dino Blue stay? You know, she's she's related to Samwa. Um, if she stays, she's probably got the best form in the book. How do you read it? Because it's it's very much Marmite. This horse does he does she stay? Does she not stay? And Rishi Passad thinks she will stay. Stay. There you go. Stay. Um, I, I think actually, I think it's possible she might be better over this distance over fences. I look back at the race that she was fourth in um, behind, or oh, behind, uh, where was it? She was placed in the, she finished fourth with just behind Love Envoy in the Brandy Love race um, at Punchestown. Uh, oh, back yes. in, uh, and Brandy Love obviously quickened away. Dino Blue actually got a little bit outpaced and probably in two or three strides further, she might have just picked up Love Envoy uh, and may have got second, I think. And she finished that race off very strongly. Um, and then looking back at the run in the last year, I just wanted to have a look back again at her run behind Mascard in the Grand Annual. And you look back at that performance and she she makes that horrid mistake at the, at the last fence. Um, and you kind of think, okay, she's going to back out here and you'd be, she'd be forgiven for... for getting passed by a couple of horses. But actually, she sticks to her task really well. And she runs hard to the line. Now, I haven't got numbers because I don't have the actual figures of what her time was. But actually, watching her from the line, having stopped like that to run to finish as close as she did to Mascara, I thought was really good. Um, and you rightly point out, Ash, she has got, for me, the best form in the race. Um, she's the top rated horse in the race because she's the best horse in the race. The doubt is whether or not she st- sees out the distance. I think she does. Um, I think that everything about the way she, she races suggests that she could actually be better over two and a half miles. There you go. The uh, the vote from Rishi is Dino Blue stays and is the most likely winner of the Mayor's Chase. Lee, do you see it the same way? Uh, I, I suppose we, we did speak about this on the Sunday show. And what's your sort of opinion on the Mayor's Chase at this stage? I, I, I don't think Rishi could have put it any better, to be honest. I think she is... Uh, got males the best uh, form that last day. Um, Willie Mullins was quoted as saying he thought that she could actually turn El Fabiolo over at uh, the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, look, at if, if she's in that form, I, I think she'll be tough to beat. She, she stayed on fine um, the last day as well. So, yeah, look, um, like Rishi says as well, against Mascara, 
you, you could have forgive her for, for for backing out a bit. She she could have been fifth or sixth and in, 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 in slowed right down and like Rissy says, she's bounced back from that mistake and was still staying on at the line. And um yeah, look, I just think the start of the season I wanted to find something against her because I wasn't sure if she'd definitely stay. Um I just convinced that she's Miles the best for me and uh look allegory devas has got to step it up um she bombed out against rivier de tell two runs back she's bounced back again uh there uh, on her latest run um there's a few in there people are giving shouts for limerick lace uh, i know you like braid hill which you know is a fair shout at when you put her up the bigger prices for an each way play but yeah look i'll keep it simple dino blue for me i think she's she's best in here and in in, in was um you know show her class basically similar as yeah harry we already know where i'm what i'm gonna say so it won't be four votes for dino blue but are you gonna make it three votes for dino blue do you like dino blue in in, in the mayor's chase here oh lads the shackles are really off here i mean dino blue is oh, this is we're talking we're talking trenches warfare here we're going dino blue <laughs> is literally like <laughs> you're relying on her well i certainly am anyway um she look I don't. We don't need to go into it. She's miles the best on form, and if you go out, how the race will unfold. Allegory de Vassi is going to be held up. She's she she's a good jumper, but I mean, she got to impervious last year, and she she jumped to the last, and she just did not stay up the hill, and she kind of just threw it away. I thought. I thought I she think, threw it away. I think, or I think isn't she? I think she's going to. You know, either go close or bomb out completely. Yeah, know. well, I, I think, I think, even, I think, yeah, I think he's spot on. But I just think with the class of Dino Blue, I just think that she could be away and gone here. Um, and I think coming down round the bend, Rishi, you mentioned it. She clattered the, the last two fences uh, at Channing. It wasn't the second last where she made a thuttering error. Um, I yeah. think there was a few. I think there was a few fallers actually at that second last. I think um, there was a Cobden horse. Um, right. I can't think of. Yes. Um, so Time White obviously came down. It was a carnage fence and Muscada was away and gone. And she still cluttered the last and ran up. She, she was only six lengths, but she was she was really staying up the hill. I think if you're crabbing at her staying, I think you're clutching at straws here. Look, like, like, I've, like I've mentioned, <laughs> I'm in the trenches here. We've got the, the, the cavalry have arrived and <laughs> we're two weeks away. If she gets there in, in, in full fitness, she will not be beaten in this race. There is nothing that can beat her that is at her level. Ash, I know you're going to call Bride Hill. She will, Dino Blue will carry Bride Hill twice round the new course and the old course and she will still finish in front of her. So look, Dino Blue is well and truly the one to be on in this. I'm more just thinking about how I'm going to edit the fun now later. And I just, you, you said she wouldn't be beaten. And that's going to fit lovely into the quote section right here. Beaten. <laughs> this, this is editor app right now. He's, he's absolutely loving it. It's going to be, she will not be beaten right here on the screen. Um, no, look, I suppose the big one for me all season um, is is Bride's Hill. I, I I will get the, I will get the trumpet out of this one, and you can you can do what you like about it. You can you can put it wherever you want because um, look, I, I I went on a space. I think it was the racing interest space, and they asked for one. I think this is back in October or November now, and I wasn't really looking at any anti-post markets. But at the time, the one that stood out for me was Bride's Hill, and she was thirty three at that point. Um, so I hope people listened and got on there. But I think she's got a really interesting profile coming into this because, as I said on the Sunday show, I, I sort of half looked at her for the mayor's chase last year. She beat Telly something girl by four lengths at, at Telles on on decent ground, and you know she was she not she wasn't the slickest jumper in those in her novice chasing career. Gavin Cromwell's almost admitted that himself, uh, and she she's had taken her time and she's had to work on her jumping, but she came back to win at the Stole in, in September and absolutely bolted up first time out. Don't think they're expecting her to win by that far, and then she got into handicap company. She carried eleven twelve, and she beat in Queen Jane quite nicely there of Henry de Bromheads. Uh, must be a babe was back in for, uh, third, but it was back in fourteen lengths back in third. So you know, I I think that was pretty decent form there, and that Queen Jane was running quite a nice race at Limerick in a handicap chase before coming down at the fourth last as well. Um, had to give that horse 11 pounds. So I think she's just shown herself that she stays. She really does. She's fairly ground versatile. And even the last day at Huntington, the, the race kind of fell apart a little bit with a couple of fallers, one of them being Carol's par. So I would give her a small squeak to it at 25s in this. But um, she will beat Brides Hill. Carol's pass will beat Brides Hill. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've each way money on that's fine. No problem. But... Um, <laughs> Look, look, 
I, I will I will say eight to one is 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 on the skinny side. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to be back in there at much shorter. I will I'm yeah. I'm happy to admit that eight to one is probably skinny, but she's eight, in each way price, and um, everyone knows my my love affair with her this season. So this is really the the do or die in this race, and uh, I I like her. I think she's got I think she's full, full of quality, and I sit on the other side of the fence. I'm not sure if Dino Blue will stay. So uh, on that reasoning, I'm taking her on, and Brides Hill is the one for me. But I will give a shout to to Carol's Pass at 25s. Um, gentlemen, that's the race is done. Very quickly, we're going on to handicaps. As we mentioned at the start, <coughs> handicap weights came out today. We know the Irish marks. We know the revised British marks for some horses who ran in the last week or so. Um, so we're just going to highlight a couple that we think are interesting and, and, and the price they are as well. Uh, Rishi, I'll come over to you first of all. Um, any handicappers that you're sort of on the list that you're thinking, mm, this is tasty? Well, I haven't had a chance to delve in with real depth yet. And I've had a, a little bit of a pointer from a friend of mine who's actually pointed me to one horse in the county. So I went and had a look at the run of Bialstock of Willie Mullins, runs in the Rich Ritchie or um, Susanna Ritchie colours. And the run at Leopardstown where um, he was brought down um, earlier in, in February, um, absolutely cantering, brought down two out, has got a similar, a similar mark to go into the county. And actually just look, uh, and then went through some of the old form of, of this horse. Was fourth in the Royal Bond behind Farron Glory. Now, I know Farron Glory, obviously, last time there was a, an excuse for the performance. I think he bled. But prior to that, he was going to bolt up at Aintree, and he'd run really well before that. And some other good horses in and around that. I mean, obviously, well-touted horses, King of Kingsfield, and Tobar, who everyone thought was going to be uh, a superstar this season, hasn't quite delivered. But uh, Bialstock was not beaten that far. And I think the mark... In, in the county, which I I'm just I had a look, brief look at some of the horses at the top of the market who are a bit more exposed. Obviously, Iberico Lord is a standout in that race, um, but he's won a couple of big handicaps to be able to win, uh, obviously, the Greatwood, the, the Betfair, and then the county. That would be something else. I mean, yeah, we're then talking about a real champion hurdle horse next year, if he could do that. So I'm just looking at a little bit of value and Bialystok, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, that would be a play for me in the county. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll back you up in the fact that um, Willie Mullins said after he won at Punchestown last season, he instantly went Galway Hurdle uh, with him. I think it's yeah, I think it's Galway Hurdle. So he's obviously fought a big target to this horse before, and you were right, you know, absolutely cantering into that handicap hurdle at the DRF. So could be onto a nice one there, Bialy Stock. I believe you'll pronounce it correctly. I think I might pronounce that wrong. Um, Lee, handicaps wise, is there is there one or two that's standing out for you? Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, Rishi, but I backed Bialystok uh, yesterday because I thought uh, but I'd get in before the wait I actually did. I'm going to say good, Lee. Good. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> um, yeah, look, uh, I thought it was cantering as well. I did um, actually back at the Dublin Racing Festival. I was kind of gutted because I would have liked to see um, how close uh, the horse would have went. But, um, yeah, brought down in the melee uh, on that home bend there. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bialystok uh, has got a huge chance. One of the bigger price as well. Um, better days ahead uh, for the Martin Pipe. Um, Gordon loves to target this race. Um, he, he obviously was. He's a huge fan of Martin Pipe, and in, in, in kind of this is his race for a handicap. He, he says he always uh, targets this the most and loves to win it. So better days ahead. And but um, I think I've been. Um, Johnny Deneen, let's call it, because I think Johnny's put up Cribilli for the plate on up in the ante. Um, so, look, people are going to miss out at where a day late, maybe it's for this, but uh, Jake Price, I was talking to him, he kind of guided us the way with Cribilli and, and looking at the form, um, Tamuris was second the last day, um, come out and, and, and ran a solid race there in the Pendle at the weekend. Uh, Trelawney, um, had run second in the grade two, the tout, I think it was, um, the time before. Um, there's plenty of uh, good form in there and, and, and gets enough a good weight. So I think it's probably now around sevens or something. If Deneen's on it, it's probably three to one favourite now. So you might have missed the boat. But uh, yeah, one for the plate. And also, I did put Lark in the morning way back as well um, on, on one of our Sunday shows. Um, is around fives, I think. Fair. I know I know for a Budos, but I think a mark of one, two, two now. I think look should should come there, Cantering really um being targeted for the race. There's plenty in there. Batman G Rack um off a mark of one three three. I know you're a fan, Ash. I, I did back 
um, that one a while back as well before got the mark of one three three. Um, I, I, I just think I've won two two uh, Lark in the morning. I, I think is really well in it. And Joseph again, another target trainer for these type of races, and um, he's been in good form this season. So look, Lark in the morning five to one, Crabilly seven to one. Um, but then bigger prices, better days ahead, and I do like Rishi shout Bialystok as well for the county. Lovely stuff, Harry. Yourself, couple of couple of handicappers potentially. Yeah, a few. Um, obviously, we were both at, at Kempton at the weekend, so I'll start with the most obvious one. I think everyone <laughs> cotton on to this horse. Um, Ordinary Joel. Oh, my word. Uh, it was just... <laughs> I mean, you, you can't even describe it, um, but it was, it, it, it was genius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I've got a job in the industry, so I want to keep my job. Um, so it's kind of a, a case of it was a brilliant ride, I'd say. Um, and look, this horse has stayed off an unchanged mark, uh, off 140, I believe, which is pretty remarkable. Um, there was no um taps at the rear end, let's say, and um, it this horse ran on all the way to the line, which is always good to see, especially when you have a nice pot lined up. I think it's around 12 to 1. Um, for I think he, I think he's entered in the Coral Cup and the uh, the can, I, I'm not too sure yeah, what other race he's he'll entered. He'll go to the pipe. He'll go to the pipe. Yeah. So all the pipe that the pipe. My bad. Um, but yeah, he's around Toronto, and I think you spot the obvious. And then there's another JP horse. I'm kind of sticking with the trend here, and it's actually in the Boodles now. I have taken a swing on a horse called Nara um, for Henry de Bromhead, now owned by JP. Um, JP's got. I'd say two in there at the minute that I think will definitely go. Melantino will be one, but I don't think Mark Walsh will ride this horse. I think Mark Walsh will ride Nara. I think Melantino's obviously been ridden by John Joe Jr. twice, uh, both at Cheltenham. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps the ride. And Mark Walsh, who's ridden Nara twice, he will get the ride. He will keep the ride on Nara. She's 33 to 1. Um, non runner, no bet. You'll, I think you get 20s uh, around that mark. Now, if you go back to the race at Nace, that race has been prolific for winning the Boodles. Jazzy Matty won the race uh, last year and obviously came, um, well, didn't win the race, the race at Nace. He then obviously won the Boodles. But Eagle Fang won the race at Nace and Nara was 13 lengths behind Eagle Fang. Now, I just think it was, a, it, it, it wasn't suspect by any means. It, it was, it, it was a ride in, in fair and square, but it was. Nara was only a length behind Eagle Fang when she, they they both met first time out over hurdles. I wouldn't be surprised if Nara turns out to be well above her mark of one two six in the in the boodle. So at thirty three to one, I'm taking a punt. Not 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 more than no bet. That's no more. Nara thirty three to one. I'm going proper anti post style here. Um, I think she's a live one for some pretty notable connections. So there's two for you. Brilliant stuff. Um, myself, uh, I am going to just add one to my Boodles team. I do like Batman uh, Girak, as, as, as Lee has said there. I also want to add Liari, uh, 12 to 1. I think she's a class, uh, sorry, he's the class animal coming into this. Um, free from free, won the Musselburgh race last time I was at Scottish uh, Triumph Hurdle, I think. Um, yeah. Jumps really well, plenty of pace. I, I, I hope Paul Nichols sends him here. The, the vibe very much from, from Ditchett yesterday on Monday, as, as we record, is, um, was that he's going to go here. But then at, Kemp, uh, at Kempton today, uh, the guy this morning, he, he sort of maybe hinted at the fact right. that he might think about the triumph a little bit more. Didn't he? Didn't um, he um, what, what mark did he get put up, though? Didn't he get an extra few pounds? He's one, three, four, which I think Who's is that? Main... Bam, Is that Batman Jira? No, no, this is Liari. Yeah. Um, oh, Liari. Get a few bit tax extra, and I just think that might tip him into the triumph. That's the only thing. I hope not. I really hope not, because I do. I do think he's. I think he's. I think he's better in the Boodles here, m much better, I'd say, than the um than going to the Triumph. He's got plenty of pace. The thing is, the Triumph is, is is you need to be a stayer, and he does look like a bit of a speed horse myself. Um, so I think if they chance their arm with one three four on the Boodles, he's a classy animal. Uh, Twelve to one's fine about him. Uh, in the Potems, I'm I'm willing to take a chance on Anna Benina. Um, 140 for her 
not bad. She snuck into to, to, um, the qualifier last time out. I think she's around the 20 to 1 ish mark. I don't have the price to hand right now, but I think that's where I saw her the last time out. She might be 20 or 25s. She's a classy, classy animal back form with you know, the likes of um, Queen's Brook and even going back to some proper nice mares. Um, she might even be battling in those those races where Rishi was talking about earlier with Brandy Love and all that. I know John McConnell really liked her for the con uh, for the county hurdle last year, but I just think it just came a bit too, it was a bit tap for toe for her. And she does like that two and a half and potentially she might stay a little bit further for the Potems. This, I feel like it's been the plan for a while with her. So I, I chance Anna Benina in the Potems and uh, in the Kim Your which is probably the Kim Muir, but maybe not, but maybe the Ultima. I'll, I'll, I'll reveal it now, but this will be my anti-post tip for today. Bow to greatness, um, 20 to 1. I think he's got a much better chance of getting into the Kim Muir than the Ultima. Um, speaking to Ben Paul today, it looks like it's the Ultima for him. Uh, sorry, Kim Muir for him. He's, he's very unlikely to get into the Ultima, but I would back in for both races, non-runner money back at 20s. Um, he, this this just seems like this is the year plan from, from Ben Pauling. He's, he's, he's a big horse. The, the, the quotes are, he's a big horse. He takes a bit of time to get right. And today he was saying that we think we've got him absolutely spot on after Kempton. And that tells me this has been the plan for a while. And he's run a great race in the, in the Coral Trophy. He probably should have won the race, to be honest. But the fact he hasn't won him has done his mark brilliantly. Didn't he? Huh? Travel like a dream at Kemp. Oh, travel like a steam train. Um, one free free for him. If he sneaks into a Kim Muir, he I go so close. I, I'd be really quite sweet on him. Um, so yeah, bow to greatness at twenties for the Kim Muir slash Ultima non runner money back. <laughs> Lovely stuff. We'll go on to then. Lovely segue into the actual anti post tips. So uh, episode six, uh, Rishi, you're joining a team of Johnny Deneen, Tanya Stevenson, David Jennings, uh, James Stevens, and Jane Mangan. Uh, for the audience naps, so you've got some got some names. Yeah, good, I'm sure good luck. I'm, I'm sure you'll swim rather than sink. Don't worry. Um, what's your um, what's your antipost tip for, for for the final episode of our Cheltenham Antipost series? I have been all over Dysart Enos all season long, and everything for the mayor's novice hurdle. And everything she's done this season has only filled me with uh, encouragement. Uh, I know that there are people who love brighter days ahead. Uh, there are people who love Jay de Grugy. Uh, there's uh, one or two shouts for Golden Egg. Um, Queen's Campbell. Lots of good horses in the race. And annoyingly, because we talked about it at the very start and talking about the Cheltenham Festival and what is the positive and the negative. And I'm not a massive fan of the mayor's races. I think they should be done away with and that we should have less racing, better racing, deeper races. But actually, this is a terrific race. This yeah. mayor's novice had a terrific mm. race. But the beauty about Dysart Enos is she's unexposed still, like the others that I've mentioned, the J.D. Grugy and the uh, Bright um, Days Ahead. But she's getting weight from those two horses. She's getting five pounds, and she's hardly been off the bridle to win the season. I mean, she beat, beat the bat, I think, with more in hand than uh, the couple of lengths that she beat him um, at Cheltenham. Uh, when she beat Queen's Gamble, at Market Raisin, I was devastated because I was a massive Queen's Gamble fan. And I thought, well, maybe Queen's Gamble giving her weight, that's what tipped it in the favour. But actually, I was honest with myself, sure, she beat her fair, she, she would have thumped her if she had five, six, seven more pounds anyway. Um, and I, there's nothing about any of the opposition that I'm, you know, I've heard what Gordon Ellis had to say about Brighter Days Ahead. I've even heard what Lee's had to say about <laughs> Brighter Days Ahead. <laughs> but the, none of them have achieved more than she has on the book, nothing, nothing has been achieved in the book. It's still potential. Yes, they might turn out, but there's nothing in their form that says that they are better than her. And yet she's getting weight from them all. That little bit makes me even more confident that she could be something very, very special regardless. So it's Dysart Enos for Rishi in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. And it's, it's, it's like we planned this, but going over to Lee straight away, uh, episode six, God, what it would be it'd be absolute coincidence if you put a Bryce Days ahead here, wouldn't it, Lee? Well, it is Bryce Days ahead. Look, this is the last in the, the series, so I had to like get her on the team sheet. Um another trumpet blow here, but we did I did put her back at the first video I ever done of the season. I put her up as, as one to follow because um look, she's beautifully bred. Um, I think she's got that. You know, blend that she, she stays well. I think the new course, um, two mile one, um, I think will suit her well. And just now, look, the vibes from the yard is, is is she's one of the better ones this season. Um, from Gordon, Jack's mentioned it. Um, 
I think Harry Swan has even said, look, she she's the nap of the festival and I think she's made nap of the festival at a at a reasonable price. Look, you could put in the El Fabliolo and double her up if you wanted, but I do think she is you know, five to two, I think is probably is still a fair price or whatever you can get for her. What price did you get for her? Two, two to one. I is think that... I might have done you there. Might have done you half a point, but I've got you two to one. All oh, right, okay. Uh, look, I, I, maybe double it up with El Fabiolo, but uh, yeah, I think she's at the <laughs> festival and I think um, she'll take the world of beating. I do I do like Dice De- De- Artinos, to be fair. I did have a save at, um, way back just, you know, to cover my bet. And then Jade de Grugy's, um tried to muscle in as well. Um, but yeah, great ideas ahead for me, not with the festival. Oi, oi, very good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd love to side with Rishi here being the guest, but uh, I just, I, I agree with you completely, Lee, 100%. Yeah, she yeah, is, yeah. she's, she's, is she's that, very I agreed good. with the real wagger. Uh, no, not, <laughs> not, 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 not directly linked, but it has helped my comments here. Um, no, like, uh, I, I think she's very close to my Napoli Festival as well, but uh, we'll get on to that more likely in the preview next week. Harry, come over to you because. For our two, slightly bending the rules slightly, but the rules have been bent in a way that's in our favour, I suppose. What is your episode six anti-post tip for everyone watching? Now, listen, this could, this could either be brilliant or it could be absolutely devastatingly bad. Um, I'm going with it. I'm going with a double uh, to 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 finalise my anti-post dockets now. Envoyle and I have heard some like very, very, very strong, strong words. Um, there's, there's been a, a few people that um, I've, I've spoken to and apparently there's been a few pieces of work where Envoyle and has just been like freakishly good. And it, in comparison to uh, this time, probably three weeks ago, I was kind of a little bit hit and miss, but looking at the weather forecast, especially what we heard uh, the clerk of the course at um Cheltenham say today with the, the ground is, is is pretty damp. You'll be able to tell us better than anyone, Ash. You you literally live there, so um, I can't imagine the ground's going to be pretty good. He's currently four to one. Now, if you actually have a look at the markets, that most of them are non running no bet, and you've got the likes of Al Fabiolo in there. Well, he's not going to be going. You've got the likes of Fast or Slow in there. He's not going to be going, and then it leaves Bambridge at the top. Now, Bambridge, we all know, needs better ground. Now he he was he was very good, and if you just take it away, Envoy Lens got the hustle and bustle of Cheltenham down to a T. Obviously, he tipped up when it was when when it was COVID, but he just obviously missed the crowd that that year. Um, he obviously just he he just wants he, he wants to hear the roar, and um, look, I think I think he is uh, pretty strong pretty strong now, and he, he's four to one. I can't see him being four to one at the off, especially if Bambridge. Is uh is out of there. No, obviously stage star is going to be a big threat, but I would be slightly worried that Paul Nichols fancies Ginny's destiny over stage star. Now, if you'd have said that at the start of the year, I think you'd have been, I, I think you'd have been talking like Ginny's destiny is a better chance going into Cheltenham than stage star. Now, it could be to do with the race. The turn is actually being potentially quite a weak race now. Um, Grey Dawning could potentially come back in. Um, but I just think Envoy Len is, is a very, very good horse. He was obviously a neck behind Jerry Clom at Down Royal. Um, that was no n- nothing wrong with that performance. He just got outstayed, outstayed I reckon, by a, a true Gold Cup horse. So he's going on He's going on the list. And the other one is uh, we're taking Envoy Len into the trenches with uh, Dino Blue. She's uh, she's being added to the double. double. It's the double, Harry. The, the, there's the double. She's uh, So we've got the double, nine to one double. Um, I think it's a... Uh, it's a pretty good double, to be fair, because I think if you, like I said, if you're rolling on to Dino Blue, if Envoy Len wins, then um, I think you're uh, you'll be clutching at straws if you if, if you're crabbing a stamina because uh, she, listen, she will win. She's like she's she's a class apart. So yeah, Envoy Len and Dino Blue for me. Brilliant stuff. And as I alluded to earlier, um, Bout's Greatness is my uh, episode six one. I won't delve into why because I've already just done that, but I really do fancy him. If he turns out, if he rocks up to the to the Kim Muir, that's why he's not running money back. If he rocks up to the Kim Muir, uh, I think he's got a fantastic chance, but I've just saved myself there because if, if he does by any means get into the Ultima somehow, um, I think he'd have an equally brilliant chance. I think the staying test is really going to suit him for Kim Muir. Really do think that would that would do him the world of good. So uh, bow to greatness for me. Uh, lads, the audience, uh, Cheltenham tip, uh, a great follower of the channel. I wonder who, this will, I wonder who this will be. <laughs> a great follower of the channel is... is, is... 
Yeah, it's Finn Dog BGP. He does like our content. Fair play to him. And whenever he comments, he just gets all the likes in the world. So he commented. Uh, we'll be on screen now. Premier Magic twelve to one for the Hunters Chase. Um, so that is that is he put it up at sixty sixes last year. So fair play to him. Uh, and he's putting it up as the final audience Cheltenham tip. So uh, I think the audience got a nice price one there and a nice one on side. Um, that's all we've got time for on this episode uh, and our final episode of the Cheltenham Antipos series. Rishi. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. You've been a fantastic guest. Um, where where can we find you, this Cheltenham? Are you on ITV? Are you racing TV? Uh, ITV, all four days, and in a couple of mornings on the opening show, but on every afternoon, hopefully not making too much of a fool of myself. <laughs> Fingers <laughs> crossed, anyway. That's, that'll be Harry doing that job, don't worry. You, you yeah, that'll be, me. Run it, run it. That'll, that'll be me, Rishi. So, yeah, you, 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 I'll take I'll take the honours for that, that, I, that week. I, can I just say, I'm the only one who's not going to be working the festival, so... Yeah. He will be. Lee will have eagle eyes on us. If any <laughs> yeah, so... You can have a you can have a pint pint on me, Lee. Yeah, have a pint on all of us there, and you'll be fine. Don't worry. Um, if you did enjoy, please do like and subscribe. It's a final episode. Smash the like button. Put your uh, chat them nap down in the comments below, and we'll endeavour to get back to them. Uh, we'll be back uh, Saturday as usual. I'm sure 10:30 a.m. on Twitter for our Saturday live Sunday show on on the on the Sunday seven to eight. Uh, it's the final one with um, with Rose Cheltenham Lee, so sh should be very very good. He's the exclusive. He's not done one before, and he's doing it with us. And then next week, Lee, the preview. Why should people be watching the preview next week? Uh, well, we'll have some great guests on. We've got Rob um, Aitchen off. Um, of course, Rob Core. He's going to go through all the Rob Core horses. Uh, we've got Nick Pierce as well from the um, Dan Skelton Yard. He'll run through uh, Dan's runners and. Um, all their plans as well and Ella McNeil as well from McNeil family uh, she'll go through all of uh, their runners too but we've got um, Jack Dolan on as well um, he's going to be hosting with us and we'll get some um, juicy content plenty of uh, winners hopefully and in, in some insight behind the scenes there but um, yeah look Sunday should be good as well Road to Cheltenham he's going to give us some exclusives so he normally gives the big red X and he's going to give us some exclusive stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's Sunday um, at 7 o'clock. And then the preview night is 5th of March, next Tuesday um, at 8 o'clock. Brilliant. And including an interview with Danny Mullins as well on the preview. Danny so Mullins, be... I forgot about Danny Mullins. I forgot about Danny Mullins. <laughs> yeah, Brilliant yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, we'll be back. Uh, preview. And then rolling on to Cheltenham and, and beyond. So if you did enjoy, please do like, subscribe. If you're having a bet this week or any week, please do gamble responsibly. Uh, but until then... We'll see you very, very soon.